Hello everybody, today's lesson or video is going to be on solids of revolution or how we make 2D objects become 3D objects. So what you're going to need today are your notes, a pen or a pencil, and probably a calculator. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is what is a solid of revolution? A solid of revolution is a three-dimensional figure created by rotating a two-dimensional figure around an axis or a line. So when you see this picture, this yellow picture right here, our 2D object is a triangle and then this little notation where it's like a circular arrow, it's telling us to rotate or revolve around or sometimes you see or hear the word about, which means around, the y-axis or the vertical axis. So if we would have a two-dimensional triangle, when we rotate it around that y-axis, we get a cone with the vertex or the apex of the cone on the bottom and the base is that blue on the top. So let's look at some more real life examples that you've probably seen before. So these I think are called honeycomb decorations or they're foldable tissue paper that you unfold. So you would unfold it around that axis or revolve it around that axis and so this semicircle would turn into a sphere. Another example that you've probably all walked through at one point or another in your life is a revolving door. So the door itself is a rectangle which is the 2D and then if we were to keep revolving it all the way around it the 3D object has become a cylinder. So the 3D object from a 2D rectangle is a cylinder. So that's another example that you've probably noticed or seen. So you're probably thinking, Littlefield, why do we need to know this? Um, to be honest, why you need to know this is if you're going to take calculus, this is like the basics of calc. So when we talk about what calc is, calc is the culmination of trigonometry, so you're going to constantly be using SOHCAHTOA, and then geometry, and this is where the geometry comes in, is when you have these weird shapes getting rotated around and all that stuff, and then also using algebra um, to solve those things with trig and shapes. So it's the perp, the the reason why you need to know this is for the foundations of calculus because this is like the bare bones starting stuff is revolving things around axes whether it's the x-axis or the y-axis and why do we need to know that those models are used for estimating all sorts of things like volumes areas and we'll look at some of those examples today on how we could even do it right now so today we're going to look at like shapes we already know like triangles prisms cylinders cones, all that stuff, right? Rectangles. But when you get to calc, you're going to get weird, funky shapes like this guy, and then you're going to have to figure out how to find the area under the curve that way, which is going to be a little crazy, but at least we don't have to wor worry about calc today. We're just going to be worry worrying about geometry. Okay, so another couple things you probably want to write down um, is before we talk about examples, let's talk about cross sections. So I'm sure you guys have all heard of these words before and probably already may know what these things are. So cross sections are the surfaces or shapes, which are 2D, that are or would be exposed by making a straight cut through a 3D object. So depending on where you're making the cut, whether you're making the cut horizontally or vertically or at a slant, you can get different 2D shaped cross sections. Um, and the reason why we need to know this is that a 2D shape before revolution is only half of the cross section of that 3D shape. So um, I'm just going to go back a little bit. So like this guy, the cross section of a sphere, if we were to cut a sphere in any way, shape or form is a circle, but the... Um, 2D shape of the cross section that we need before we revolve it is half of that cross section which is a semicircle. So that brings us back to this. So let's look at cones for example. If you're going to cut a cone horizontally like this guy, the first picture right here, if you're going to cut it horizontally that cross section is going to be a circle. If you want to cut it vertically that cross section is going to be a triangle and if you vote if you cut it at a slant this isn't really a full circle. Um, circles have radius or radii that are um, all equal, so every radius in a circle is equal. This is an ellipse because this radius is shorter than this radius. So point is, depending on how you cut a 3D shape, your 2D cross section can be different. Okay, moving forward, let's look at some examples. If you already know these things, maybe you don't need to write it down, but what would be a cross section of a sphere? Well, we already talked about that. It would be a circle. How about a cylinder? Mm, well, that depends. If you're going to cut it vertically, your cross section is a rectangle. And if you're going to cut it horizontally, your cross section is going to be a circle. What about a pyramid? That's also a little different. So 
A horizontal slice or cross section would be a rectangle or a square given the base. Um, and then of course the vertical slice is going to be some sort of triangle. Okay, so I think we understand cross sections. So let's talk about some examples. So we have four main examples today. Number one is a little different because we have um, four parts for number one. So the question is, what would be the solid of revolution for each 2D image if they were to be revolved around the or about the y-axis? So for part A, we have a triangle. And as we saw in one of the examples earlier, if we were to spin this guy around, sorry, my mouse isn't working for some reason. If we were to spin this guy around, we would get the shape of a cone. So we would get a cone for this guy. For part B, if we would rotate or revolve a, um, revolve is probably a better word because we've learned about transformations with rotations and that's just turning an image and it stays 2D. But revolving is where we get the 2D to 3D. So if we were to revolve a rectangle around the Y axis this way, we would get a cylinder. If we were to revolve a semicircle around the y-axis, we would get a sphere. And then part D is a little tricky. So if we were to revolve, so, so far, sorry, let's back up. So far for parts A, B, and C, notice how the 2D shape is touching the axis. Some part of it is touching. What's different with part D is that there's a gap or space between this 2D rectangle and the axis. So what is that going to create that makes us think a little differently? So it's still going to be a cylinder because we have a rectangle as a 2D object starting with, but now this as we rotate it around and we rotate this around, we're going to have a hole in the middle, kind of like a toilet paper roll, which I know is super timely for right now, but that's how it becomes a 3D shape. So if you're having a hard time visually in these, um, I just looked up uh, um, solids of revolution GIFs. So here's an example of what is happening. So if we take that triangle and this is around or about the x-axis if we're revolving around that, see how it's making the revolution. And so every time you make a revolution, whether it's around the x-axis or the y-axis, um, some people have a hard time visualizing it because they forget that like that motion is circular or cylindrical. So when you rotate something like that, think about how it's going to be a smooth revolving around it. So it's creating that smooth image. Like we would never have a triangle like this revolve into a pyramid. That just would never happen. It would always revolve into a cone. Okay, so hopefully that little picture helped you a little bit better. Okay, example number two. So we want to sketch the solid of revolution and we want to find the surface area and the volume of a 3D solid. So we've already gone through a lot of examples. So when we see this particular image right now, you should be thinking about how it's going to revolve around the y-axis. We didn't say that, but I guess we're assuming that it's the y-axis because that's the only one drawn. Um, and then we know that triangles from all the examples we've looked before are going to turn into cones. So I'm going to draw my best shape of a cone and this is what's going to happen. So as this thing turns around in that circular motion and it's at an angle so it kind of looks like an ellipse, but this is what it's going to do when it revolves around that y-axis. So we have a cone. So when we find the surface area of that 3D image and the volume of that 3D image, 3D image, we're going to need to know the surface area of a cone and the volume of a cone. If you don't remember, surface area for cones is the base area, so pi r squared, because it's a circle, plus pi times r times l, where l is the slant height, and the volume is going to be one-third times the area of the base, which is pi r squared, all times the height. So the first thing, we know what r is, r is 6, so that's easy and h is 6, so that's easy. So the only other thing we need between these two formulas is L, which is that slant height. Well, if you remember Pythagorean theorem, you can take 6 squared plus 6 squared to get 36 plus 36, which is 64. If you break that down, you'll get 6 square roots of 2 or some decimal. Or if you remember that if you have an isosceles triangle and you go from the leg to the hypotenuse, so 45, 45, 90 triangle, you're going to take 6 times the square root of 2. Anyway, that was a sh quick, quick, quick review from that. So surface area is going to be pi r squared, so 6 squared is 36, so pi times 36 plus pi times r is 6 times l, which is 6 square roots of 2. 
So you're going to get surface area equals 36 pi plus 6 times 6 times the square root of through 2 is 36 square roots of 2 times pi. This is as simple as it gets because the first term has pi in it but no radical and the second term has pi and a radical. So you can leave your answer like this which is pretty gross or if you want to type it all into your calculator and get one big decimal it would be 273.0411. Uh, units squared. We don't have a label, so that's that. That's that. Okay, and then volume. I'll draw a little line. So it's going to be one third. The area of the base is six squared, which is thirty-six pi times the height, which is h. So, whoops, six. Volume is uh, one third times thirty-six times six. My calculator is telling me is seventy-two pi. If you want to write out the decimal, so take seventy-two times your pi button. The volume would be 226.1947 units cubed. So that would be the volume of a cone. So the, the hardest part of this problem was trying to remember how to sketch the solid revolution. We should remember how to find the surface area and volume of a cone because we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Okay, example number three. Sketch the solid form by rotating about the x-axis and then find the volume of the 3D solid. So we are rotating around or revolving around the x-axis. So that means that this is revolving like this and this is revolving like that. So it's going to be um, like what I said with a toilet paper roll, but we're going to have a hollowed portion in it. So if we want to find the volume of that 3D solid, we have to find the volume of the big cylinder and then we have to subtract like what would be the toilet paper actual roll like hollowed out in the inside so the small cylinder so um, the volume for a cylinder is the area of the base for a cylinder the base is a circle so it's gonna be pi r squared and that's gonna be times the height which this toilet paper roll is laying flat or sorry not flat the circles are on the side so the height is technically being horizontal in this picture so the height is one two three four so h is four for both the big and small cylinders and then now we need the radius for the big and small cylinders so the big cylinder if we're going from the middle that's one two three so the big cylinder has a radius of three and that small cylinder has a radius of one so for the big cylinder Volume is going to be 3 squared is 9 times 4 times pi, because our height was 4. So the volume is going to be 36 pi. And then for the small cylinder, it's going to be volume is equal to pi r squared. Well, the radius is 1, so that's 1 times the height is 4 pi. So that's 4 pi. And now what we want to do is we want to take 36 pi minus 4 pi for the total total volume so that would be the total volume is 36 minus 4 is 32 pi which you could punch it out into your calculator if you want to but I'm not going to I'm just going to leave it like that so again these examples are all review from surface area and volume but the hardest part is trying to Im imagine or envision what that revolving looks like around the x-axis or the y-axis and I know sketching is super gross I mean if you look at my sketch it's not the best okay the last example we made it example four sketch the region bounded by the line y is equal to three y is equal to one x is equal to one and x is equal to six it's been a while since we graphed stuff so when you think about graphing lines you're probably like y equals mx plus b but none of them look like that right now and that's correct so when you have y equals a number it's a horizontal line and when you have x is equal to a number, it's a vertical line. And how I always remembered that is this little acronym that goes hoi vox, where hoi is horizontal on y and vertical on x. Okay, so that means that y is equal to 3 is that line right there. y is equal to 1 is that line right there. x is equal to 1 is that line right there. And x is equal to 6. So the cross section between all four of these lines is this rectangle right here. So find the perimeter of the region. So perimeter is the distance around the rectangle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
one, two, five, and two. So that would be five plus five is 10, plus two plus two is 14 units. Find the area of the region, five times two would be 10 units squared. And now it says sketch the solid created if the figure is rotated about or around the Y axis. So I'm gonna actually erase some stuff. My pen is being really funky right now. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this stuff. Hopefully that was easy for you to find that. And we're actually gonna go back so we don't have to worry about that. Um, just so it's an easier picture. So it was this cross section and they want us to sketch that rectangle if it would be revolved or rotated around the Y axis. So that means that this little guy is going to create a circle around and then this is going to create a circle around. So it's going to be a really, 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 really weirdly wide cylinder or flat short cylinder with a little bit of a hollow hole in the middle. Okay, so your homework then is to envision or visualize these sketches and then also to answer any surface area and volume questions, which are kind of a review from the whole entire unit from all these 3D shapes. But that is all that I have for you guys. So make sure you get at least these four examples written down um, so that you can reference them later. And then if you want to write any of those definitions down, if you didn't know any of those things, you could write those down too. And that is all I have for you guys. So thank you all for taking good notes and I shall see you soon.